Hi guys, it's Marty here from letsbuildwp.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to install WordPress on HostGator web hosting. This is an updated version of one of my older videos as HostGator have changed a few of the steps since my last one. But this is a totally up to date version for 2017. I'll also show you how to get your first month web hosting with them for only one penny. So if you're ready, let's get started. So all you need to do is go to www.hostgator.com or alternatively you can just click the link below this video. Either way once you get here we just need to click where it says web hosting in the top left and that's going to show us the three different hosting plans that Hostgator have to offer. To be totally honest with you the business plan comes with a whole load of added extras you probably won't require when just getting started so that really just leaves it between the hatchling plan and the baby plan. The only real difference between these two plans is that the Hatchling plan allows us one single domain, which is one website or blog, and the Baby plan allows us unlimited domains, so that's as many websites or blogs as we'd like. So if you're only planning to have one WordPress site, I'd recommend going for the Hatchling plan, and if you're going to have more than one, I'd go for the Baby plan. As I'm only registering mine for the tutorial, I'm going to go for the Hatchling plan, and once you've decided on the plan you're going to go for, we just need to click underneath where it says sign up now. That's going to bring us here and this is where we're going to register the new domain name for our site. All we need to do is enter whatever domain we'd like into this box. So for me, I'm going to register learn wp for free. Then on the right hand side using this drop down, we can choose which domain extension we'd like. For me, I just want the .com, but you might want to choose something else. Then once we enter our domain name and choose our domain extension, hopefully it comes up and says added primary. This means the domain name is available for us to register. If it comes up and says something else, you will need to choose a different domain name for your site. Then we also have the option to purchase different domain extensions as well. So we could purchase the .com as well as the .net or one of the other ones. But for me, I just want the .com. Once we're happy with our domain name, underneath it says Domain Privacy Protection, and this is totally optional. It says Let HostGator.com help protect your identity online. Privacy protection hides your personal contact information from public view. What this basically means is there's a website called Whois.com, and anyone who registers a domain name, their name and email address appear on this site. It's a totally public site that anyone can look at. And if you purchase the domain privacy protection, instead of your details, it'll be HostGator's. But to be totally honest, I normally uncheck this box and I haven't had any problems to date. But if you want to keep your site totally anonymous, you might want to check this box and add it to your bill. Then once we're happy, underneath it says choose a hosting plan. And here we just want to check that our package type is correct. So I choose the Hatchling plan, so this is fine. Then underneath where it says Billing Cycle, we can choose how often we'd like to pay for our hosting. We can choose to pay for it once a month, once every six months, or even every three years if we'd like. Now we do save a bit more money the longer we buy at one time, so that might be something to think about for yourself. But for me, as I'm just doing this for the tutorial, I'm going to set mine to monthly. Then underneath we just need to choose a username and security pin for use with HostGator. And underneath we can enter our general billing information, such as our email, our name and things like that. Then on the right hand side we can choose how we'd like to pay for our order. We can either use a credit or debit card or PayPal. Then underneath it says add additional services and there are a few different services that HostGator offer. I normally just uncheck these boxes myself. But if you like the look of any of them, you can just check the box and they'll be added to your bill. Then under that it says enter a coupon code. And as I said at the start of this video, I'm going to give you a coupon code that'll get you your first month hosting for only one penny. So there might already be a coupon code entered in here worth 20 or 30% off, depending on which offer they're running at the time. But instead of this coupon, if we just delete it and instead enter learn WP. One. So that's all one word, learn, 
and then the letters WP and then the number 1. Learn WP1. Then we just need to click validate and if we scroll down you'll see that we're now getting our first month hosting for only one penny. Although it does seem that one of the hosting add-ons is still checked. As you can see here it says hosting add-on 299. So we just need to check what that is. That's this one here so I'm just going to uncheck that. Now when we scroll down the first month hosting is only one penny. The domain name is 1295. So in total I'm able to get my WordPress website up and running for only $12.96. HostGator also have 24-7 phone live chat and email support for free and they also offer a 45 day money back guarantee. Once you're happy with everything here all we need to do is check this box that says we've read and agreed to their terms and then click check out now. So I'm just going to pause this video for a second while I fill out my information above and I'll be right back. So if you're following along at home, you can just pause the video as well while you fill out your information and then hit play after you click check out now. Once we've finished paying for our order with HostGator, we're going to be brought to a page thanking us for our order. At this point we can just close this window and we want to open up our email inbox where we should find two new emails from HostGator. These emails might take a couple of minutes to show up and when they do, keep them safe because they are quite important. Although for now, we just want to click into the email that says your account info. In this email, we're going to have a link to our control panel, a username and a password. So all we need to do is click the link beside where it says your control panel and that's going to open up this cPanel login screen in a new window. Now all we need to do is copy and paste our username and password from this email into the cPanel login screen. Then when we do that we just need to click login and this is us going to be logged into the HostGator cPanel. Now to install WordPress we just need to click here where it says WordPress installer and then choose our domain name from this drop down. So for me it's learnwpforfree.com once we've selected our domain name, we just want to leave this box on the right hand side left blank and then click next. Then here where it says blog title, this is just going to be the name of our website or blog and don't worry too much about this, it can be changed later. So for me, I'm just going to type learn wp for free. Then admin user, this is just going to be our username for logging into the site we could type something like admin or our first name or something like that. I would just like to point out though that our admin username might show up in a few different places on our site. So that might be something to think about when choosing your username. Then first name and last name, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then admin email, this is just going to be the email address we want to have associated with our WordPress site. Once we've filled out this information, we just need to check the box underneath that says we agree to the terms of service and make sure that this one's checked as well, the one beside where it says automatically create a new database. Once the two boxes are checked, just click install now and WordPress will install in literally a couple of seconds. There we go, it's already installed now. And on the right hand side, we can see our installation details. This is going to show us our domain name our username and our password. So for now all we want to do is right click our domain name and click open link in a new tab. Or alternatively you can just open up a new tab and manually type in your domain name. Either way we're going to have our site open in a new window. So as you can see I'm on learnwpforfree.com and it says website coming soon and then there's a green button that says admin login. If we click this green button it's going to open up the login screen for our new WordPress site. Now all we need to do is copy and paste our username and password from this page into the login screen. This information should also be sent to us as an email so if for whatever reason you lose access to this screen you can just check your emails and you'll find your username and password. Once we paste them in, we can just click log in and this is us going to be logging into our WordPress site for the first time. 
When we first log in, there's going to be this welcome message asking if you need any help, but I would just recommend clicking underneath where it says, I don't need help. Then we can also close this advert at the top by clicking the X here in the corner. And here underneath where it says dashboard, you'll also see it says your site is currently displaying a coming soon page. Once you're ready to launch your site, click here. Just go ahead and click that link now and that's going to make sure you can visit your site at any point to see what it looks like without seeing a coming soon page. So this is what's known as the dashboard and this is where we're going to be brought anytime we log into our site and this is where we can make any changes or add any content to our site. To visit our site at any time we can just click our site title at the top and this is what WordPress looks like when we first install it. Obviously we're going to make it look a lot better than this, but this is what WordPress looks like by default. Then to get back to our dashboard, all we need to do is click our site title again, and that's going to bring us back to where we were. So that's how to install WordPress on HostGator web hosting, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel for more free WordPress tutorials in future. Once again, my name's Marty from Let'sBuildWP.com and thank you very much for watching my video.